Luke 12, if you turn there. <coughs> you said that on the way in. Spring is really trying to get here, isn't it? It seems to be really trying to make an effort. When does spring officially begin? Saturday? Saturday? Yeah. The 21st. The 21st. Now, that's the, is that the equinox? Yeah. We have a meteorologist here. So that's the equinox? Yeah. But when does, there, there's two ways to tell it, and, and Brother Welsh would bring it up. Then what's the other, when does spring then officially begin, the way you and I feel it? When the star, when the store starts stuck in that spring no, time slot, March first. March the first. The first one is astronomical. The first one's astronomical. The second one, which was the twenty-first, the second way, March the first, would be meteorological. 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 How you feel. So when does winter start? With December 1st. But then, as far as the stars are concerned, where do you to start? Yeah, so as a kid, I always thought to myself, oh, man, it seems like winter started right after Thanksgiving. As a kid. And we would say, no, but it starts December the 21st. I'd say, well, we're well, well in the winter. And then if you go by what the animals do, how, how long do they hibernate? Well, I can't hear. Four months? Five months? No. Until the warm's up. <laughs> no, I think it's like five weeks, six weeks. It's the hibernation. So by, uh, I think the middle of December, the skunks and raccoons, whatever's hibernating, they find where they're going to spend the winter. And so if you go six weeks, then you're into what, what's... What do they celebrate six weeks into this? I can't hear it. Groundhog's Day. So, you know, they pull out the groundhog, and because groundhog, that hibernates. And so when that's waking up, that's spring. They're coming out of their dens, and then you can smell the skunks. Yeah, by the first week of February, you're hearing the birds already singing, and so on. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is uh, what we're going to do. Let's see where it goes. Luke 12. Did I turn, tell you to turn there? Luke 12. It is four verses. Verse 54 through verse 57. And it's all about the weather. And he said also to the people, Father, bless our preaching tonight, that it would be fruitful in our lives now. And that we make it simple. And I, and I hope it's accurate, Lord. I really do hope. We want it to be biblical now. In Christ's name, amen. Now, I don't want to make this stuff up. Making it up. And maybe this will be, I hope it's not made up, but we want to just preach what it says. And he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway you say, they're coming to shower, and so it is. When you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat, and then it comes to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judging that what is right? So we pray, we've read the four verses. And I guess you might say after we're all done tonight that I made more out of it than it really is. So we're going to spiritualize a lot of this stuff and uh, come up with an outline. I have 12 points in there, believe it or not. And uh, seems like he's talking about the weather, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem like he's talking about the weather there? Seems that way. Seems that way. He's talking about the weather. He's analyzing the weather. He's saying that, listen, people, you can analyze the weather, but you can't analyze this time. That 
that Jesus is coming. Boy, is he mad. You know, this is the time to get saved. Uh, it's, it's the end of the world. Why would it be the end of the world here for, for at this point? Jesus is, you know, this is 2,000 years ago. I guess we could spiritualize that. I don't it, Some places they would call me a kook. 2,000 years ago. How many, how long ago were, were, early is it for God? It's only two days. See, these are the last days. It's only been two days. He's got a big watch. He's got a big what? Watch. It takes a lot of time for that. Day. Yeah, I know. Go he's, got, he's got a big watch. And it's only been two days. And he's saying, listen, you, 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 uh, here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm the uh, Savior. I'm going to die on the cross. You can't see what's going on. You can't seem to discern it. But you sure can discern the weather. Uh, Bedford's a little odd place. Um, no. It's not, yeah. As far as the weather is concerned, Bedford and just east of here tend to get more rain than other places. Now, how I know this is by uh, greenskeepers that uh, keep uh, these, especially these private clubs. A greenskeeper. Uh, they put out there a uh, a water catch. They want to know what the rainfall. Is. Water gauge. Is that a water gauge? I don't know. It's some kind of a gauge. They put that out there. A rain gauge. I mean, there's a way to catch the. It's probably a big round thing. It catches the rain, so and then when it builds, it it's calibrated so it, it gives you the amount of inches and all. There's a, it rains here, it rains just east of here. Now, how I know that is Hawthorne Valley Country Club, they would get more rain, that's just about two miles east of here, more rain than all the other golf courses. Now, why is that? Tinker's Creek, coming off the lake. Uh, no, it's the topography. The elevation of the land, the, like mountains, you, you uh, to, for the cloud to get over, it has to dump the rain or dump the snow, then the cloud can lighten up and get over the mountains and all. So there's a, there must be a ridge near here. And you know where it's, where does it snow? Up there at, uh, what's the name of that town? Not Chardon. We know it snows up at Chardon. Huh? The east side of town. Not Asheville, Beachwood. It, it, it snows at Beachwood. If you go up to 91 and you head north, you go up a big hill there, and you can get up there, and you can see it for a long way here. But they say the Earth is uh, a cue ball is smoother than the Earth. That's what they claim. And that's why I've heard a statistic on it as far as how how smooth the Earth is. We think it's got these big, deep valleys, but compared to the circumference and the the diameter of the Earth, compared to a cue ball, it's supposed to. Yeah, I've heard that. Now, is it true or not? Now, listen. We watch the weather. What groups of people watch the weather? Grandma oh, Bell. Grandma Bell. <laughs> Elder people, you said? Wait, what did you say? Wait, Wait, landscapers do. Uh, what other group of people? Farmers do. Especially farmers. House painters. House painters. People working outside. Especially farmers. They're, they're going to watch the weather. Now, this group of people, uh, they know the weather. Uh, what are the seasons that are listed in the Bible? How many seasons are there? How many seasons are listed in the Bible? Two. Two. What are they? Spring and winter. Nope. Summer. Summer and winter. Spring and fall are not mentioned. Springtime and harvest. Huh? There is springtime and harvest, but as far as uh, the seasons, and it's going to last all the way, and how long does that last? In the verse. Genesis 9. As long as the... Pardon? As long as the earth remains. And not till after the thousand years. 
you know, we think the millennium is just going to be peaches and cream. There's going to be there's going to be snow removal. <laughs> it's going to remain. Until, it's going to be as long as the earth is here. And God's not going to create a new heaven and a new earth until that's old. You might snow tomorrow. So it could snow tomorrow. So, this, uh, so there is harvest. Another way we do all fade is a leaf. That would be a uh, fall and so on. So we discern we discern this. Uh, this weather. So we have all C words here. It says, and he, he said. Who's the, who would be the greatest one to be telling people about the weather? <laughs> who would be the greatest one to be able to tell people about the weather? He. Well, if, and who is he? Give me the C word, other than Christ. The yes, sir. You are right. You get the first ten dollars. <laughs> you can make 120 bucks today. <laughs> Twelve points. The Creator. He made it. He's designed it. He. It works. It's. It's. And it's going to keep working. Uh, seed time. All that. It's all going to keep working until He creates a new heaven and a new earth. Uh, they say if we're just a little closer to the sun or, or a little further, we, would, we, we wouldn't even be able to make it. Now there's verses in the Bible when, it, when, he, uh, when he does burn this up and he removes the sin from the earth. Some, uh, I think it's a, a Brother Hansen's father did a paper on this. Dr. Hansen is that the earth moves in the heat scat versus to prove it. They're geo these group of guys are geocentrists. That it moves closer to the or no, the sun moves closer to the earth. And it burns up. Uh, if there's anything in this earth you want to have burned up, what would you have it burn up? Mosquitoes? Flies. Etc. Et but it burns up they they claim it burns up all the sin and then the millennium starts and so on. I don't know how true all that is, but they, they do a paper on it. But it, he is the creator. The creator uh, has uh, designed this. And Jesus, at this point, is going to use this to preach to them. Now, I'm digging deeper than what it just says. What it says is, listen, you're going about your daily business. But you're not paying any attention to what's going on. The Creator. So it begins with He. And He said also to the people. The people, in this case, I, I'm going to call, are the careless. Uh, Sunday comes and goes. Uh, are there sports on today? Certain sports? Yeah. High school or uh, college basketball. Oh, oh, it's the uh, uh, Ding Dong Madness. March Madness. Is it March Madness going on? Yeah. Ding Dong Madness. Ohio State was playing today. Ohio State was playing? Oh, they're in the Ding Dong Madness. I hope you're not watching that. Junk. There's, a, there's a whole group of people that are perils that are out there. They, they uh, church is on the back burner. They know it's there. They know they should be there. They have conscience. Uh, we don't go and uh, uh, twist people's arms to come. You know, the doors are open. There's tons of just careless people in every society, in every culture. They're just meandering through life on the longest funeral march in history. And one day they all fall in the same plot of land, uh, six feet deep, eight feet long, and they fall in there. That's the only piece of real estate they're going to end up owning. They fall in there until they meet their maker one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Yeah. So there's a bunch of careless people, but they're wise and smart enough <coughs> to view the weather. They, uh, what, what do you call that, March Madness? Uh, our, uh, two presidents ago, he was into that. Oh, it's called a bracket? It, it, do, do you gamble on the bracket? Well, they make this bracket. 
as far as the winner and, and to select who. The idea is that after everybody's eliminated, you can get eliminated on the first playoff. So you got uh, the Sweet 16, you got the, what do they call the eight? The Elite Eight. Oh, the Elite Eight, is it the Elite Eight? And the Fabulous Four, what's the four? Final Four. Oh, the Final Four. And the, and the whip doodle two. I don't know, what do they call the two? The champ. Oh, the champ. And what's 32? Do they call that anything? They got that all down. They got the bracket down. You got the weather down, but you don't have me down. You said you don't have me down. You got everything else down. You, you, uh, uh, and we, we watched Lil the other day on, uh, uh, we took her to a gymnastics thing, and, I, and as I was viewing this, when you're doing, a, when you're on the a big mat, the large mat, they play a song and then they're flipping and, now she didn't participate in that, she has an injured ankle, and they're flipping around. She participated in the parallel bar and the beam, the beam and the parallel bar. Then you have the uneven bars, and then you've got the, uh, you got the vault. And the, horse, the horse. Yeah, the, I think that's the vault. The horse. The rings. The ring. Yeah, and what do they call the rings? Is it just the rings? No. They had rings there. And nobody was on them. There must have been other events after we left. Probably, uh, it's more of a man thing. Get on those rings. You need a tremendous amount of strength for that. Is any of that in the Bible? <laughs> None of it's in the Bible. Where is it in the Bible? If I would, uh, I would say it's in Ecclesiastes. Men have many what? It starts with an I. Interests. Inventions. Inventions. It's an invention of man. And I thought about it as as I was viewing it. Well, why did they invent these half a dozen things? Why did they invent something else? But, but it's not just the United States doing it. it, it it's worldwide. They all do it. It's, it's, a, it's a wild invention. Physical training. There's physical training. And, 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 and give me the verse for that. But when you grow up, it profiteth little. But I will say this. So, there is profit in it. I learned to fall, so I haven't killed myself yet. <laughs> there is profit in it. Uh, wait a minute, how does it say uh, Bodily exercise profiteth little. I mean, people, especially guys, get into bodily exercise. And then women do it for health reasons and, and what they consume and what they eat. And on and on and on it goes. They're into all this stuff, but they can't see Jesus. By the way, these people that are careless, the careless, do they know about Jesus? This is general rule. Yeah. They know about him. Exactly. They have their preconceived notion, what they've seen on television, what they've seen in a movie, what they heard from grandmother, what they heard from the grandfather, what they picked up some literature, they picked up some literature. So they know a casual amount, and some of it could be very true. So what are the two places that uh, men generally believe in? Heaven and hell. It's a general rule. And then if you're a pretty good person, where are you going to go? It's a general rule. You're going to go to heaven. And as a general rule, if you're a pretty bad person, you're going to go to hell. Now, if you, you want to get rid of all that, they, go, they don't go to heaven in the Catholic system. There's a billion people in it. Where do they go? Purgatory. They go to purgatory. And so God's going to burn off all the sin that's in them, and then eventually they're going to go to heaven. You know, we want to have a, a you know, the end, the end. You know, as it says in the movie, the end. They want it to be a happy end. So you have the creator, E, and he's going to use this weather forecast as his illustration. And he's addressing it to the people. 
the carrots. When you see a cloud, when you see, let's stop there, when you see. So people observe the clouds. I never learned the names of the clouds. There's serious, the serious clouds. There's the cumulus. Stratus. Stratus, is that a cloud formation? Stratus. <laughs> cumulus. Is there a serious? Or is that a radio thunderhead? It's a, a thunderhead? Well, that's a good one. But that's not a cloud formation of when you look at That is a cloud formation, but shelf. I think a different way. Huh? Is it like a shelf cloud or something like that? A what? A shelf cloud? I'm pretty sure. A what sure. cloud? A shelf, like A S H E L F. Shelf. Did you, uh, <laughs> what school did you go to? What? I'd like to know the name of that school. No, I think it's true. <laughs> Oh, it's part of the thunderstorm. Part of the rain cloud. But he said, when you see. So there are people. Now we're using this weather forecast as he's using the weather forecast as an illustration. There are people that are, our third point is, they're curious. There is a curiosity. They're, they're curious in worldly events. They're curious in politics. They're curious in sports. <coughs> there's there's a curiosity out there and there's a curiosity there's a curiosity with spiritual things now we're going to spiritualize this stuff so when you see a cloud so our fourth point is the cloud who comes in the clouds Jesus Jesus when you see a cloud now I would have liked to have said it says rise out of the west the other one, the next verse, it says, you see the south wind blow. It would have been more fitting for me when you see it rise out of the west. Where is heaven? What direction? North. It's north. I, I wish it said north, but it doesn't. It says west. By the way, this illustration, I would assume he's in uh, Israel. Northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. North. Northern hemisphere. What's the prevailing winds? Westerlies. They're westerly. So up here, they're turning uh, westerly this way. On the southern hemisphere, they're turning, uh, they turn the opposite, right? Yeah. It's a southern thing. And I don't know exactly how it works. So then what happens at, I, what happens at the equator? Now I heard of a guy that, uh, a scientist got in a bathtub, got in a plane, and so which way does a twister when we say a twist or a tornado, which way does it turn? So I analyze trees. When I heard about this, I analyze trees. If you look, if you look at a tree, how does the tree? Do you look at the bark on a tree? Does it go up like this, or does it go up like that? Counterclockwise. Uh, I would assume counterclockwise. If you look at a tree, which way the? And some trees don't don't twist at all. Some don't twist at all. So. He got in a, uh, an airplane. Uh, if you're in your bathtub, most of 95% of people take a bath, uh, a shower out of bath. But when you see the water go down the drain, it goes, I believe it's counterclockwise in this hemisphere. When you get the southern hemisphere, I believe the water goes clockwise down the drain. So he got a plane and he wanted to see what would happen once you cross the equator from one hemisphere to the other, I'm pretty sure the water direction changed from counterclockwise to clockwise, going down the drain in a bathtub. Now, was he sitting in the bathtub when he did it? I don't know. But I've heard of this experiment. You know, men are curious. They do experiments. So they're curious. He, uh, and he said also to the people, he said also to the people, the curious, the Creator says to the careless, when you see. So they are curious. They are curious, and they're curious about Christ. When you see a cloud, and so Jesus is going to come in the clouds. I mean, I'm spiritualizing all this. You know, there is, uh, I heard it said, amongst 
journalist in the late 1970s, they asked the journalist, now today I don't know what a journalist would say, the late 70s, I, I heard this, I thought I heard it on Paul Hart, is what is the next greatest event to hit planet Earth? You know, they took a poll of journalists, writers, people who are editors and write newspapers and articles. And overwhelming was, yeah, was the second coming of Christ. That was the next greatest event to hit planet Earth. Did he come? No, not yet. We've got a nitwit in the White House. We got a nitwit, we do. That's pretty See, it's, it's, it, it feels as though we're getting close, <laughs> but we may go four years, and then and then you got a whole nitwit for a, a lecture, uh, those up doing the voting, they'll vote them back in for another four years. In this. So you got the curious, and then you got the cloud coming. Jesus Christ is coming. And you see a cloud rise out of the, uh, out of the west, straightway you said, they're coming. They're coming. And so it is the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when you think of our Lord, uh, what is supposed to take place as far as rain? What's it, what's it called in the Bible? For the millennium. Do you? No? No, no, what, it, it's actually something rain. The latter rain? The latter rain, yes sir, the latter rain. And it is to replenish all the damage and to fix, it's a big fix up. Now what does it say in there? Is it a thunderstorm? It's a shower. So when you, when you feel a shower, is it, is, it, uh, is it tumultuous or is it calming? I'm talking about a, a summer shower. Depends on what, like, what you're doing, what type of attire it is. <laughs> what type of attire? Yeah, if you're not wearing your tires or not. Say that again? If you're wearing a tire, it may not be too good. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, it brings a calmness or a shower. <laughs> it's just so like a shower. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> well, I like a man having happiness. This is why I flung third grade. <laughs> <laughs> there cometh a shower, and so it is. The shower, is, it's a calmness. So, he, he, now, now think of it as we read the verse, and he, he said also, now I'm telling you, you've never heard this before. You've never heard that preachers don't go there. They're going to go just what it what it says. What what it says. He's, he's saying, listen, you you can you can tell the weather forecast, but you can't you can't see that I'm here. And he said also the people when you see cloud rise out of the west, straightway say they're coming to shower. And so it is. So he, the Creator, tells the careless people, you see, you're curious, and a cloud comes out of the west. <clears throat> in the straight way you say there comes the shower, there's a calmness, there's heaven. Folks, people think the general public, I, th they don't believe. Now, I've met one person that I can recall was a, a woman who was about 30 years old. She just, or she would maybe be between 30 and 40, point blank to my face. When you die, you go to, you go to the grave like a dog. You die a death of a dog, you go like a dog, and that's where you stay, like a dog. She didn't believe in heaven, she didn't believe in hell, but man, as a general rule, man, people believe in heaven and hell. They believe in that. So the shower and, and, and heaven, and they would like to think that most all people are gonna end up in heaven. Who ends up in hell in their minds? Murderers. Murderers. Kubla Khan, Genghis Khan, Hitler, and a few others off. Stalin. Stalin, oh yeah, he's, he's rotting in here, man. Stalin. All the professing good people. All the professing goody two shoes. 
and all the repentant bad people go to heaven. So there's this calm, verse 55. And when you see, when you see the south wind blow, and when I was figuring this out, and there's there's only two illustrations given. And if one is heaven, well, then what's the other illustration? What what else could it be? Hell. Does it say that there, there's going to be heat hot in the verse? It's pretty obvious. So there is a, and I call it our seven point verse fifty five. When you see it, there is a consideration such as the curious, they, they reconsider when you see it. So men consider what's going on about them. When you see the wind blow, now this is not a calming shower, this is now the wind is blowing, and it's more chaotic, the calamity. When you say there will be heat, uh, Listen, when, when it's hot out, when it's 100, 100 degrees out, man, where do you want to, what are you looking for? You're looking for a glass of iced tea or lemonade? A glass of ice? You're looking for a cool place to head? So it's, I like it unto hell. If there's, if there's a heaven, then there must be the counterpart of hell. And so the heat is there. Hell is reality, the, the calamity. There will be, uh, there will be heat and it coming to pass. Now, he gives these illustration elsewhere. He says to the Pharisees, not that this is part of the sermon, he said, you look to the west and you see, what is the color that you see? What does he say? Red. Is it red? You see the sky is red and you know it's going to rain. And you know it's going to rain? Is that what he says? So he's given the same illustration in another place. You see, you see it's red in the west and you know tomorrow it's going to rain. Pardon? If it's red in the west, it's going to be nice. If it's red in the east, it's going to rain. Oh, okay. It's whatever the illustration is. No, uh, uh, and unless you're trained in that or watching, but you see, these people didn't have television, and they, they, they had all day long to watch this stuff. They got all day long. They, they notice the sky. They see the different colors in the sky, and they can tell exactly what you're, what to expect. If, by the way, if the wind is blowing from the east today. Generally speaking, where does it blow from tomorrow? North? No. Generally. West? No. From south? It blows from the south. If it's blowing from the south tomorrow, where is it going to blow the next day? The west. If it's blowing from the west, then what's it going to blow the next day? Oh, I see the north. It, I think it, it's standard. It makes this this clockwise. Now, Joe may say after the service, you're, you're all wet. But generally, if it's blowing from the south one day, the next day it's blowing from the west. When do you want to go fishing out in Lake Erie? I mean, we look at the weather. If I'm going out to the bay, I'm looking at the weather. West is best. West is best. You go out to the bay when it's a west wind. Another good wind would be a south wind. So right next to shore, it's calm. But west is best. So the consideration, you see, they see this, and he says that, that there will be heat, and so it comes from the uh, past. And notice it comes from the south. Well, if heaven's north, then what is south? Hell. And you know if a south wind, a nice soft wind, south wind is blowing, you know it's going to be warmer. So when is it going to be colder? When it blows from the north. Northwest, north, or northeast, especially northeast. We get our biggest uh, snowstorms when it comes from the south. 
Uh, well, and that's actually real snow. The general snow. Well, that, 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 I call that real snow. When we get when we get the north wind, northwest wind that's coming off the lake, that's the you know, lake effect. We don't call that real snow, <laughs> even though it's really bad. All right, verse 56. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face. Give me the C word for the face of the sky. You see a person's face. What's that called? Climate. Say it out loud. Climate. The what? Climate. No, no. I'm looking at your face. Complexion. Oh, I tell you, uh, it was this one here. She had a thumb in her mouth today, and I stuck my tongue out at her. There's a thumb in there. She stuck her tongue right out next to her thumb. Countless. Thank you. The countless. When you see the person's face, you can read the face, the countenance of the face. And so here it is the character, that the face would be God's character. You can tell, uh, uh, you can discern the face of the sky. You can discern the countenance of the sky, but what about the countenance of God? So in the world, the careless and for the people, he can't see but God is, what is God to all these people? God is what? Their conscience? No. God is love. God is love. Everything is love. It's all love. Is that true? Is God love? Yes. It is true. But see, they forget our God is a consuming fire. And if you don't have a three-dimensional picture of God, all you're doing is you're going to these uh, anti... It's the Church of the Antichrist. <laughs> People sit there, they lap it up, and they get a poor perspective of what God is. God is a three-dimensional figure. And if God is love, you get just a two-dimensional picture, it's a perverted view of God. It, it is true, but it's a perverted view of God. You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that you cannot discern this time? The countenance, discern. You cannot discern this time. Meaning, his illustration is to discern if you're viewing the sky and all, and the, you're just you are viewing the physical things as compared to what? What's the opposite of the physical? See, you can't discern the spiritual things. You can discern the physical things, the fleshly things, but you cannot discern the spiritual things. So that is the comparison to discern and be able to tell the difference between the one and the other <clears throat> and apply the one. He's applying the one to himself. You can see that, but you can't see what's what the, the signs of the time, this time that we're in, the comparison. Verse 57, yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? It's a question. You, you, you don't yourself judge. So yourself, in the way it's uh, you're judging this, is your own conscience. The conscience means to judge. This. What I mean, what's your conscience telling? To to go uh, to go through life, and the, the closer that you get to the edge, you can't have the discernment, and your conscience is telling you. Like I, I preached a week or two ago for Sunday morning, time is running out. The conscience of a man, the conscience of a woman. To have that woke up, oh, that's the big thing, we're all woke. I mean, what nonsense. I'm sorry. 
Jesus says, I change not. God doesn't change. The conscience. Yourselves judge. Waking up the conscience. Verse 56, ye hypocrites, ye cannot discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye cannot discern this time? Our last, and that is the condemnation. For verse 57, if you can't yourselves judge, for those who cannot discern this time, there is then, in the end, the condemnation. You will burn like a crispy critter. You're going to burn like a crispy critter. Like a crispy exoskeleton insect, man, you're gonna burn. Wasn't there a cereal called I sold her what? Crispy critters. Crispy critters. Yeah. <laughs> there was a there was a, a cereal. Do they still sell that? Crispy critters? It was canceled and green. Huh? <laughs> crispy green. No, 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 no. No, no, Peter might have. Is that the donut company? Mm -hmm. Peter might have objected that. Crispy Critters. It's, it, it was like Captain Crunch, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was Crispy Critters. Yeah, folks are going to burn. They'll, they'll burn and go to hell. He's trying to. Our Lord is waking them up any way they he can. He does it with the weather report. You can figure out the weather report. But you can't figure out that I'm the Lord and I'm going to die on the cross for your, your sins and so on. You can't discern the time. You can discern everything else, but you can't discern that. Right? Our title tonight, my dear lad back there, was the weather forecast. They can, they can forecast the weather. But they can't forecast that Jesus is coming. And boy, is he mad. Shake hands before leaving.